I was addressed by a young man who mm. said, should I do mm. deep body work mm. with Carlos mm. Chan? Mm. And uh, if I remember correctly, I think I, I was thinking, no, you should not go into this mm. big, deep area unless you don't know that you have something severe and physically uh, heavy that you must work with. Mm. Am I right or am I wrong in my advice? I think uh, in, in a way you are right. If you are aware that you've had a heavy trauma um, and you have some degree of shock or post-traumatic stress disorder, then it's almost like the body wears is, is compulsory. It's, it's the best way to go. It's, mm -hmm. it's just about the only choice. Um, but of course, there are many ways to work with the body. But then having said that, um, I think that uh, ev everyone has some degree of having to, had to adapt to their families and to their, you know, in their childhood and to society. So uh, I kind of like uh, the way that Dr. Robert Scares put it, uh, the neurologist. She said um, that human beings live in a cage, in a social cage. And this cage uh, inhibits us, it, it, it prohibits us from expressing all our feelings from uh, the very moment that we are born. And in your own, you know, book, uh, Baby Drama, mm -hmm. um, you notice that the parents sometimes would not allow their babies to explore the actors mm -hmm. on the stage. Mm -hmm. They turn the babies Exactly. Uh, 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 and of course, that is going on, uh, I think with most children at some point or another, Mm -hmm. I, I don't think that parents can be totally permissible and free all the time. You know, I think there are some parents who are more permissive than others. But I think basically that we all, all have um, had a lot of our spontaneous movements and expressions um, cut short, uh, mm -hmm. blocked um, by the need to adapt to what our family uh, expects of us and then our society, our culture. And I think that different cultures do it in different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we grow up, um, we have been living in this human cage. And then when we grow up, the cage is in our body. And it's called muscle armor. The Reichian The Reichian theory. idea of yeah. muscle, uh, muscle armor. <clears throat> so that... Uh, we survive by this armor, mm -hmm. that's the positive side of it. Mm -hmm. But the negative side is that when we grow up, we no longer need it. Uh, and if it's there and it's unconscious, then it's stopping us from having a full life. Yes. So w wouldn't you agree that uh, if it's a young friend, no, uh, being very interested in his devel development, yes. that he could profit from psychodrama, from a play around with the scenes, like we mean in psychodrama, that he could start or play around in theater yes. with emotions <coughs> and attitudes and physicalities. Yes, and yes, then, yes, I think psychodrama uh, would be a very... Starting point. Yes, yeah, starting point, because um, the, the, one of the goals of psychodrama uh, as a therapist is, is to recover your spontaneity. Mm. So I think that your young actor uh, would, you know, if he joined uh, acting or, or worked with psychodrama, he would discover if he could express his feelings or not. Mm. And then he would gain insight himself. And oh, then you it would... Look, it, it looks like I'm blocked, you know. <gasps> I can't, oh. I can't, and I can't the... raise my voice. I, I, I can't make an expression of crying, I can't shout, you know, uh, I can't show anger. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's very common for that, yes. for some actors, yes. actresses, yes. that they culturally bound sometimes yes. cannot express. They can be very good at sadness, yes. women are yes. very good at sadness in exactly. Sweden, yes. whereas they're very good at anger in Latin American countries, is my experience. Yes, I and, agree. Uh, and yeah. the men, the reverse. Yes. yes. Uh, yes. So uh, ah, so they so he would see his blocking and maybe he would also develop 
an insight over the childhood um, experience and, yes. and remember more and more things. Yes. Yes. And need and he could need more. Would yes. you put the armor, the body armor, parallel in our uh, knowledge? Is it important to know the armor thing? And yes. So, so uh, if <clears throat> if if you um, don't know about your armor, um, you run the chance of spending maybe your whole life um, filtering off, you know, good feelings. Yeah. I, I hear a lot of clients of mine saying, "I'm not able to accept love." Because mm-hmm. the armor prevents it from reaching them, or the bodybuilding. Yes, yes, yes. The armor in the chest, you know, mm. the panzer. Or they say, <clears throat> I, <clears throat> I think about loving someone, but I can't express it. I, I'm not able to show that with my emotions. So, so although you say that the body work is too heavy, I think that uh, some of my body work is almost like a body awareness. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's like a body meditation. And uh, it's about, I have in the groups a daily session of body work where the idea is to actually make the person become aware of where are they blocked in their body Mm -hmm. and where are they flowing, where are they open. Mm -hmm. This is uh, the start. Yes, yes. So so I I would think that this kind of body work would benefit anyone. Mm You know, just like someone going to yoga Mm -hmm. would discover if they're flexible or not and which asanas they can do and which Mm -hmm. asanas they cannot do. Mm -hmm. And then they can start asking themselves, well, why am I blocked there, you know? Why am I so stiff in this part of the body? What happened to me? So something happened to me. Mm -hmm. So so the the, the therapy is both body work to become, you know, to, to develop a body awareness <clears throat> and then psychological awareness too. Mm. Who am I? Um, what do? What happened to me? Yeah. What happened to me? What's what my causes? family story? You know. What's my map? Mm. Uh, what traumas did I uh, have? But when you work uh, deeper and with uh, uh, real tortured people, yes. Like, uh, I mean, real mm. physical abuse. Mm. Then people sometimes t- have even repressed those those uh, memories so they don't know, they don't remember, they know they were yes. in war, they, were, they know they were tortured, <clears throat> but they have also repressed those things. Yes, because, um, I mean, very very briefly, uh, the brain has two kinds of memory. It has uh, the amygdala uh, memory, which is, uh, you know, in the amygdala nucleus, and that is an emotional memory. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, like people... Uh, who have been tortured or sexually abused, they remember the smell, they remember the temperature of the room, hmm. the, you know, like uh, uh, the, the sweat of the other person, you know, or the breathing, the sound of the breathing, or the smell of the breath. Those things they remember. But then when you ask them, how did he look? You know, they, they have no recollection. Uh, and that's because the other memory, the hippocampal memory, is the one, is, that's the newspaper reporter one, the one that says who did it, why, where, when, and what, you know, the five W's of the newspaper reporter. And in severe shock, in severe trauma, that memory shuts down. So then the poor person is left only with the, the old feeling of it, but not the details. How, how long do you, do you think we, uh, we know, have known these things? Uh, scientifically, with evidence. I mean, how long is this known? This knowledge. That this we are this about? knowledge is is fairly recent. I would say, like maybe in the last twenty years. Yeah. So after the Vietnam War, we started to work with the re- repressed. I mean, the traumatized yes. soldiers were yes. some sort of a big group that we were making yes. research on. Yes. So yes. the war gave us material to find big groups. Yes. With yes. The same thing that goes when you, when you have been raped or whatever. Yes. Yes. Or, yes. Or yes. Incestuous. And 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 the, the the treatment that the the soldiers got in Vietnam was very poor, mm-hmm. and and that's why um, they began to the soldiers themselves, they began to give themselves self-help. So they started to form these groups and they were called rap groups. You know, we talk about rap mm-hmm. music. Mm-hmm. They started to form rap groups and there were two, uh, two uh, American psychiatrists who recognized, you know, 
uh, our hospital service is very poor for these men, and these men are just doing it for themselves. Mm -hmm. They're beginning to help each other. Mm -hmm. So why don't we volunteer and help them? Mm -hmm. So then they went into these groups and, and advanced the whole movement a lot. And I think that that has actually changed the American government's attitude and, you know, the services that they offer soldiers mm -hmm. uh, after the war. Also in the Scandinavian countries now, yes. the, the debriefing is very criticized because yes. people come home with very severe yes. memories. I mean, yes, yes, yes. But the, artist has, the artists yes. have uh, shown it earlier before, I mean, always known yes. or been writing about it. But yes. as a common uh, uh, knowledge, it's, mm. it's spread yes. out. But that brings me to a more darker area mm. of my critical reflection mm. on therapy. Mm. Is it possible that you get so hooked on mm. traumatic experience, mm. so you go from one kick to another? I mean, looking for, you know the trauma, mm. you've been there, yes. you're working, you <coughs> find a good therapist, you go there again. Is it a possibility that you get stuck? Uh, I would say it's the other way around. Mm -hmm. I, I, uh, in my experience, the people who have trauma and who don't work on it tend to act it out over and over again. And that's what the literature and the research shows. So what, what does it mean, well, act like, it like, out? Like, 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 for example, um, ex-soldiers uh, who are in post-traumatic stress disorder from Vietnam uh, are often the kind of soldiers that will join a mercenary movement in the third world. Mm. Yes? Mm. So they go on fighting. They go, they go they on need going. More. Yes, need. yes, yes. It, it, you're it, absolutely right. They, they need to feel the adrenaline. Because mm -hmm. uh, it was so strong. Yes, the, the, the adrenaline rush of, of the thing. Uh, and it's well known that people who are uh, shocked uh, look for this kick. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like they're trying to prove. I can I survive need to, again. Yes, if I can go there again, you know, The Deer Hunter, the film, mm -hmm. it's yeah. a very good it's example very good of that. Uh, example. You know, these two mm -hmm. Americans who end up in, in, in Vietnam, in, you know, in with the, the Russian, Ru Russian, Russian roulette. Yes. yes, when they don't need to do it, the war, the war is um. over for them. So, so, so as long as you don't address it, as long as you don't work on it yourself, unconsciously you act it out. Okay, if that's evidential and everything's proof, and I think I think there's knowledge about this also. Yes, yes. What What about the the notion that people stay in self help groups and get dependent on on the therapeutical uh, uh, <coughs> because they feel alive when they get help? This yes. is uh, like actors in the theater; they yes. feel alive yes. on yes. stage, yes. But, but they don't feel alive at home. Is it? Is it addictive to, to get therapy help? Or uh, can you get over it and start to live? This is a... Yes, I, 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 I tend to think of it as like you, you need to be in therapy as long as your body is telling you and your feelings that you need to be. So when and is the body finished? It. Well, that depends very much on how severe your traumas are. Mm. You know? Mm. I mean, uh, um, um, I, I think... Um, like I, I mainly work with groups, so I have experimented. I've run groups for one year, mm -hmm. uh, and I found that wasn't long enough. Mm -hmm. And then I ran groups for two years, and I found some people are finished, but mm -hmm. some are not. And then I, uh, I, I started running groups for three years, and three years sounds like the best average. Most people are finished by then, so. What, what is this about? Why, why does it take so long? It's because um, our, our behavioral patterns are old habits that we have developed, you know. Uh, even if we w we're not heavily traumatized by, by war or torture or sexual abuse or whatever it is, let's imagine it's, it's just the small traumas that a lot of people have from their family hmm. story, the inhibitions to their behavior. Uh, and the family patterns, we have, we have internalized these, and they are there unconscious. Mm. We have, like, internalized a whole, um, you know, uh, it's like a set of, uh, in, in psychoanalytic terms, internalized objects that we relate to. Uh, so, and, and some of these objects are split object relationships. And then when the person tries to train, change, uh, they have to struggle with this internalized 
object relationships the that they have. The, the, yes. loved, the loved ones inside us. Yes. Or yes. the fearful ones inside yes, us. Yes, exactly. Yes. yes. So, so y- you can't do that change overnight. It's not good enough to have insight. You actually have to experience it. But do you actually have to beat them out of your body? I mean, to scream them out and to attack them and and to be very aggressive? Do you, yes. Does it help? Y- yes. If if those feelings, I don't ask people to be aggressive. You know, uh, 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 if they if they're not feeling it, uh, I try to follow the feeling of the person. But um, it's it's like this. Um, This is like the most recent research, and Mm -hmm. I find this research very, very interesting because I think uh, most talking therapists don't know about this. And it is that uh, because we have had these, because because of this human cage that Mm -hmm. we've lived in that has held back a lot of our feelings Mm -hmm. totally, you know, Mm -hmm. from being totally expressed, uh, our autonomic nervous system, that's the parasympathetic on the one hand and the sympathetic on the other. Uh, autonomic nervous system, when, when you are feeling you want to shout or be angry and you're not able to do that, or to cry and you don't feel that your parents allow you to cry because that's not the correct thing, or you are in a gang with kids and they think you're, you're a sissy if you cry, you know, you're weak, so you have to hold back. What 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 happens in your autonomic nervous system is that you get into freeze. You st- you stop the impulse. Mm. Maybe you stop breathing. Mm. You contract muscles and mm. ligaments and joints, and you don't express the feeling. Mm. And that's called freeze. Mm. Uh, and then the tr- this is what is coming out in the research. If you don't release that freeze, you will, in some way, pay for it later on in your life. You will, you will have some mental illness, you know, or some physical illness, uh, some psychosomatic disorder. It can be high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, thyrotoxicosis, mm-hmm. uh, heart attack, blood pressure, you know, uh, hypertension, cerebral vascular accident. And statistically, they now actually know that people who have, who have difficulty in expressing their feelings uh, have a shorter lifespan and have many more illnesses, mental and physical, than people who do. So, so let, let me finish, because this is so important. So part of the therapy, uh, when you have a client that you recognize that they haven't released mm-hmm. this, these strong emotions, mm-hmm. a, an important part of the therapy is to get them to release the freeze. Now, in order to release a freeze, you have to move from the parasympathetic nervous system, which is like calming you down. Parasympathetic is pleasure, food, Mm -hmm. drinking, making love, you know, Mm -hmm. massage, all Mm -hmm. that is parasympathetic. You have to move the nervous system into fight flight, and Mm -hmm. that's sympathetic. Mm -hmm. And then when they get into fight flight, then they're able to release the freeze, because instead of holding back the feeling, then they're allowed to express it. Mm. And that is very, very important in the process. So releasing emotions and Mm. allowing emotion is so important. Yes. That is new new science today. Yes, yes. But how how long is the anger or the the screaming or the fearful shouting from the small angry child, how long can the parent know that it will have a natural curve that... I, I don't know. I think you could pro- you could probably answer that. I think it's not. It, it, it's a couple of mi- it's a couple of minutes. I mean, it, mm. it 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 is something that I my my knowledge is that uh, all the grown ups are afraid mm. of their children, and yes. it comes very much to our culture here mm. Mm. that we are so afraid of emotions. Mm. And exactly. also the teachers of the kindergarten system they say that oh no the, the parents are so afraid of their children. Yes. It's like they are powerful yes. and since we don't beat the children up as yes. much as we used to do yes. we have a law against it thank yes. god yes. the children are freer and more uh, spontaneous uh, yeah yes. they are fighting yes. th- for their rights yes. and they scream day and night for everything for yes. their rights for f- objects for sweets for everything yes. but they, the actual emotion is not so long as 
the adult thinks. Yes. So the adult is so afraid of, oh, this will never end. So they, yes. you know, they, yes, they, so they buy it. them off with things. Yes. Yes, yes, absolutely. They manipulate them yes, to be yes, quiet. Yes. This is something I see regularly now. Yes, yes. So, so the knowledge of let the emotions come out and, and then after things can be handled. Yes, yes. This is not very yes. typical Swedish right now. It's yes, yes. A lot yes. of frightened adults yes. for their very forceful kids. Yes. That's why adults very often say, no, no, we don't have the power over the kids. The kids have the power over us. Which is a total lie, of course. Yes. But they actually feel that, that yes. they lose control. Yes. And, and the emotions come free and they are very afraid of it. Yes, yes, because they want their children to be uh, what you call duktig, no, well, yeah. be, well behaved. Snälla. Yes. So. Well behaved, uh, so that the neighbors can think, "Oh, you have such a nice, kind child." You know, yes. he's so well behaved. It has to do with your yeah. own so capacity. It has, it, has to, uh, it has to do a lot with your mm -hmm. your social image, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. uh, to the rest of the neighborhood. And it has to do with this very speci special thing of the time, the time, um, the, the the stress factor in this uh, society is very high. I mean, yes. the competitiveness and yes. and things like that. Yes. But since we we are on the aggression. When Stefan in the work yes. did such <coughs> enormous <coughs> work on <coughs> aggression and <coughs> came to this uh, release with yes. this aggression, yes. you call it catharsis, which yes. is a Greek theatre term you yes. come to release. Yes. And you could see also his legs shaking. Yes. What is that about? Uh, okay. Um, when, uh, uh, when you look at the animals, animal uh -huh. kingdom, what you see is that if an animal is um, uh, captured or, you know, um, uh, it's running away and, mm -hmm. and like human beings uh, trap it to take it to a zoo or to tag mm -hmm. it, you know, mm -hmm. to put a label on it. What, what you see is that the animal, when it's anesthetized, has this shaking, uh, shaking and trembling. And like a lot of animals, they are in a sort of a dream state, acting out the finishing of the escape. What, what, what was stopped, you know, they were captured. So the movement that was stopped, they act out, uh, they actually do it in the body. Mm -hmm. and, and it's like all animals do this, all mammals do this. If a monkey is being chased by a, a, a lion or something, it can jump up a tree and then it will shake for a while and it is a shaking that allows it then to climb down from the tree mm -hmm. when the lion has gone away mm -hmm. and carry on business as usual, as mm -hmm. if nothing has happened. Mm -hmm. And this is how ch children should be. Mm -hmm. They should be allowed to, you know, uh, go through some fear or something mm -hmm. and, then, and then when they come out of it, they will relax and they will be normal. So the problem is actually to stay in the freeze. Mm -hmm. so, so when Stefan got into this, I was watching his body hmm? because I was watching for this discharge of the freeze in the body movement. And this is when his pelvis, he's in curve. And yes, yes, yes. And, and the, the legs are trembling <gasps> and the arms are trembling, mm -hmm. you know, and you then he's... You saw that the little tremble you saw directly. Yes, yes, when... yes. And this, this is a sign that he's now in the sympathetic dominance. Yeah. He's in the fight-flight mode and not in the frozen mode. And, and it's like... It's so important that, um, you, you know, they, they have been even researching uh, people that are very kind and caring and they don't know how to say no and to set limits and, and they always give, give, give in, just like Stefan was when he was a little boy, mm -hmm. being kind and nice and he's like being insulted and used by mother and father but he can't defend himself. What they, what they have done, this is amazing, is that they've looked at the white cells in the immune system of these people and the white, the white killer cells, the count is actually below normal. Mm -hmm. So they're actually uh, more open to illnesses, mm -hmm. to getting, you know, being attacked by vi vi viruses or bacteria and becoming ill, even cancer, than people who are able to access their rage. And, the, and these people access their rage then have a higher killer cell count. Mm -hmm. 
because your immune system follows your capacity to stand up and fight for yourself emotionally. So uh, did you know that Stefan was uh, taking that part, uh, th- this situation, did he choose that or was it something that you had decided <coughs> to both? No, no, uh, he, he, had, he had mentioned that he might want to do that scene. So I knew, I, I, I had my, my Swiss Army knife ready. Mm-hmm. And I had a newspaper ready because he had told me. Yeah, you had your equipment ready. So yes. this is familiar to me from the Gestalt therapy. Yes. We, we have handkerchiefs. Yes. We have chairs. We yes. never. Uh, we act yes. out. Yes. Tool, tools. That, tools, that and then we to go express to express anger. Yeah, mm-hmm. to anger. <clears throat> But uh, when the knife, I was surprised that you dare yes. to have a knife. Yes. Uh, mm, were you absolutely 100 percent sure that it could not be used in a harmful way? Or well, how do you protect the actors? Well, okay. Um, uh, this this is something that I normally don't don't go to that point of getting a knife in the scene. You know, I have done it a few mm-hmm. times. Uh, now, the good thing about Stefan is that I've known him for many many years. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, I had a basic trust that he wouldn't act out. Uh, at the same time. Uh, to protect him and to protect Per, who was playing his father, you notice that I got a tray. Yeah. And I put it, you know, in front of... A couple of inches over the head. O- over the head, mm-hmm. yes. And then he could cut the paper, uh, and I thought that was rather safe. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was standing, your own, uh, sitting right next to him, mm-hmm. yes. and and I I had this feeling that he wouldn't then go and try and stab, you know, Pero or whatever it is, uh, but but I like to help the client fulfill the fantasy, the, yes, as accurately as possible, and I think that a lot of body therapists are not aware of this. Like for example. If they see that you're angry, say, "Do you, are you angry? Oh, well, well, pick up this tennis racket and hit, you know, hit this mattress or something." Mm-hmm. And I don't think that's good enough. I think you have to ask the client, you, "What do you? What is your fantasy?" Uh, you want to go deeper. Yes, there. yes. What is your fantasy? What is the part of the body that needs to be activated? Uh-huh. Because taking a knife and cutting the face is a movement in your right arm uh-huh. and holding the knife and doing that. Mm-hmm. So it's and if another he doesn't, memory. And if you. he doesn't do that movement, maybe he gets a shoulder and an arm problem in that arm. Mm-hmm. Do you see what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or, if, or if, he, if his fantasy is to kick, mm-hmm. then it is better for him to kick than to actually hit. Mm-hmm. But this I recognize from Lowell's work and, yes. and uh, the Reich and stuff. Yes. I've done it myself in, yes. in, in uh, such a therapy. Uh, in the theater, uh, I, I I rather go and, and and we played both there. You had Stefan and I yes. played. I sat beneath the, the father, so to speak, in the mm. scene and mm. and uh, wanted to communicate with him. Uh, how about that? Uh, yes. I wanted to communicate. This is uh, an actual work we're doing yes. because Stefan put up. Uh, he wanted to see him dead and mm. put the, yeah. And then I released the blanket, the blanket and yes. it came back. Some, is he, he not dead? I yes, did it yes, on that's purpose right. a couple yeah. of times. But, but the double meaning for me was also to reassure the actor that I see you and you are not dead for me. Mm. Now we take a little pause. Now we're back again in the scene. Mm. That, what do you think about that? Do you think I was uh, flying away? I, that was no, I had fears. I, I, or well, I, I can, I can understand your intention, but I don't, I didn't think that was necessary. No, because I, you, you thought that was unnecessary. No, no, that. because then I knew Per, and Per is in therapy with me too. So yeah, I felt that he would be okay with that. If, if I didn't know Per and he was an actor and mm-hmm. I was just doing this the first time, maybe I would do something mm. like that. Mm-hmm. So maybe the difference of, of the difference opinion. between therapy and theater is immense. I would yes. I would like to make a, a line. Yes. And I always do. I yes. don't work therapeutically. Yes. But sometimes the material yes. awakes mm. a lot of emotions exactly. and fears. Yes. So you have to know what you're doing. So maybe I, I was acting theater here, yes. and you were doing 
with therapy. So yes, that, that, yes, that's, that was the meeting. that's a good way to put it. Yeah, yes. So I communicate all the time with my actors, but maybe you have a, a greater knowledge of these yes. people, so you don't have to do that reassurance. Yes, yes, because I they, knew... They take care of it. Yes, sir, right. And I knew group. he would take care of it. Mm. The very fact that he volunteered to come, yeah. and he knew that he was going to be, yeah. you know, attacked by Stefan in some form, mm -hmm. because he knew that Stefan wanted to work with his angry feelings towards his father. Mm -hmm. The very fact that he volunteered mm -hmm. was for me enough. And I've seen... Right. before right. And, being and confronted, you know, in his own therapy. This, this mm. I know from my own the therapy, that it's a power, enormous power in the group. And yes. when they know each other, they also balance exactly. what is going to be yes, yes, done. Yes, what's the okay and what is not and, okay. And the support. Yes, what so, is the limit? Yeah. yeah, so since this is um, uh, a real work by a, a suffering person doing mm. it with real persons, mm. and we are making uh, some sort of a documentation. Mm. I, I want to recall what we did and uh, the, the structure of the work mm. because it's very specific. I mean, we mm. we were warming up. Mm. Uh, we had body work short, but we did yes. warm up. Yes. Maybe the spectator of this won't see all the things we yes. did, but we were also getting contact with each other. Yes. And uh, playful and light contact. Yes, yes, both to release the body tension yes. because we had to move with the hands. Yes. And also because the hands are uh, intermediary objects for us. Yes. So if, so if I we... say the birds are getting closer to mm -hmm. each other, it's also, it's like yeah, what I'm really meaning, we are getting closer yes. to each other. Yes. But I say it through the hands because it's safer. Yes. yes. And then we were doing a lot of scenes. Uh, I was mother, for yes. instance, and we were put into different scenes and into, yes. had a lot of different emotions yes. and got to know. And before that, uh, uh, we did a precise interview with Stefan about his life story. Mm. So we had all the, the parts that we needed for this work. Yes. In, in such a work that we work, mm. uh, did today it's mm. not so much about if did I do right or wrong because the main character Stefan he can say no 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 and he stopped also said no exactly. that's too much yes. he said so yes. our our role is yes. to do and his role is to stop or I want more of this yes. or something yes today was special because because Stefan uh, just about directed his own psychodrama yeah he did he arranged he, he set, a lot he of set things. the scenes and of course Every client is not like that. No. Some clients are totally lost. They don't know anything. They, yes. They, they, they tell you a feeling or, or, you know, or something, and then, they, and then I say, do you have an idea? And I test them, you know, uh, I give them a chance. Do, do you remember a scene or some, some situation you want to work on? And they say, I don't know. And then I say, shall I help you? And then I, I have to step in and choose. Uh, in my mind, mm -hmm. I have to like choose a scene from the story that they have told me verbally mm. that I think might be helpful. Or maybe, maybe I don't even do that. Maybe I just start with the body. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I say, let's do some body work and then see what feeling comes in the body. This is a very common bioenergetic way yes. of working. I have the choice to move from the talking to the body to the talking to the body all mm -hmm. the time mm -hmm. and keep the flow of the therapy. Yeah. And this is a great advantage yeah. to this someone so who's good. stuck in the talking. So I, either we call it psychodrama yes. or uh, improvisational stuff that you structure yes. in a special way or yes. the gestalt way of suggesting work on the chair, I think yes. it has to release the yes. emotion. This yes. is the idea yes. that yes. I, I feel at home with. Yes. Uh, the, then uh, I, I think I've learned not to pay so much negative attention to what I did wrong or right in a group. Yes. Uh, because uh, yes. I, I've also learned to, to, to test or trust yes. the person who works. Yes. They know. Yes. Uh, yes. They, they know. What I think is particularly touching uh, always is the, the support from the, the group. Yes. Which is a part of this unique working method that yes. the group is the supporter of yes. the whole work. Yes. How does that work in a physical, scientific way? Why is it so? What is happening with this group of people? Yes. Is it enlarging things or what is happening? Yes. Can uh, you describe it? It's, no, the, you, you're touching something uh, extremely important. Um, 
I, I personally believe that um, when, even when we're adults, uh, every adult human relationship with another adult, with a group of adults, uh, needs us to attach to these people. Mm -hmm. Because I think that to, to have trust between two people is to have an attachment. And now there's even a kind of couple therapy, you know, mm -hmm. attachment, couple therapy, to see what kind of bad attachments the two partners had and how they're hooking each other and why the, the marriage is difficult, why you know, so the you relationship... Mean historically bad? Yes, historically bad. And how yes. they enacted yes, now yes. And how together. they enacted now, yes. yes. How, how they hook each other. They were other. never touched, so yes. they never touched. Exactly. So, so when, when I start a new group, a, 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 a big goal in, in the beginning of the group is to create a group that attaches to each other and that I am like the the mother or the father figure of the group and they become like my children, you mm -hmm. know, uh, transferentially. And so I have to create a new family for them where they feel safe and supported and respected. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I work very hard on this. So, uh, in, and how long does it take to create a group like uh, that in your experience? In, in my experience, I... I can, it, that depends very much on the therapist, but I can do it. I, I run a summer course in, in Shepsholm and Falk Oak uh -huh. and I could tell you that I can do this in four days. Yeah. I can have people hugging each other, crying, mm -hmm. allowing themselves to be supported, showing anger mm -hmm. in four days. Mm -hmm. But of course, that process depends so much on the therapist mm -hmm. and of, of course on the people who go. Maybe the people who come to my groups are a special, you know, minority, people who have heard about me and being, they're being often chosen by relatives or friends and say, you know, this would be good for you. Yeah. So, so I get a lot of people who are already rather open and... Yes. And, uh, and what's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that, but, but, I'm, but I'm, I'm saying that, I don't know, maybe if I got a group of military or something, I couldn't do that in four days, you know. Hardened people, dissociated, mm. you know, tough. Then it would take longer. Yes, With yes. more, no trust and no choice. Yes. It's like, then I can tell you, yeah, it's like, a secret. Like for, like for it's example, the same with actors. Yes. If I have actors who have chosen me or want to be in the project, yes. it goes very quickly to form a group. Yes. If I'm, I'm taking an actor or, or I'm suggested actors and they don't want to do this play, mm. they will never connect. Good. So, I mean, and this is just a social structure in yes. an art world where people are supposed to like to do what they're doing. Yes. But then the trust never comes. So yes. nowadays I say, this is how, how, how I am mm. going to work mm. and step out if you don't feel good with it. And yes. I never punish them and I think they should yes. go. Yes. So we yes. can move, the other can move a little bit. Yes. Yes. For a year. Yes, I do something like that. I, I say the first session, the first four days, you're free to decide to leave. Mm -hmm. But then after, after that, I would like to have an opportunity. So you make a, co a con? Yes, yeah, so, so I choose them and they choose me. Mm -hmm. Normally, mainly they decide to leave. I, I, it's very seldom that I have to ask someone no, to leave. No, because you don't but know them. Yes, so, yes, okay. yes. Uh, do you have any oh, questions yes. to me? I, I'd like to like, say one thing. The, this uh, trust comes from... It's like the the sharing, like the group members sharing their stories, yeah, and, and trying to be very open and yeah. honest, That's uh, and that of course creates a lot of intimacy. Uh, but then the other thing that is very interesting is that I do body work right from the beginning, yeah. and I do a lot of paired exercises, uh, and what that does is that. They share their bodies with each other. Mm -hmm. They're being touched by each other and they have to touch each other. And, and that creates a body intimacy too. Uh, and it's amazing. Like I can give you an example that I discovered, I, I found so amazing. I went to a workshop in England many years ago on, in Shatsu. And the, the Shatsu teacher didn't tell us to introduce ourselves and to say, you know, what kind of a background we came from, what was our work, were we married, did we have children? We had no idea about the other. And the, he would just say, well, you know, choose a partner, I'm going to show you a technique. And we, and we did this for two days, so Saturday and Sunday. And at the end of those two days, without knowing anything about these people, I felt I really knew them very well. 
just by the touch and the relationship and the eye contact. Mm. This is my experience too. Yes. And so especially I had a working sh workshop in Korea yes. about baby drama and I, I, I thought I can't span, spend a lot of time introducing and talking from where we mm. come and everything. Mm. We'll be, we start to work immediately in mm. pairs and mm. physical exercises mm. And, mm. and it became very, very, very physical mm. and intimate. Mm. So this mm. is my experience too. Mm. By the way, my name is Susan. My is Carlos. Thank <laughs> you.